Last video, we briefly discussed about the development of Crackdown 3. I'll link part 1 in the description if you want to catch up. To summarize, this game was in development for more than 6 years only to be released in an okay state. In this video, we will talk about what went right and wrong. This is my review of Crackdown 3. The Crackdown series is all about taking down criminal organizations in any way the player wants. They take control of an agent who is essentially a superhero. Every agent comes with 5 skills, agility, strength, firearms, explosion, and driving. Agility determines your run speed and jump height. Strength determines your melee power and carry limit. One moment you're throwing tires, and next thing you know, you're throwing tanks. Firearms determine your weapon's power. Explosions determine blast power, radius, and capacity. Driving determines your driving skills, such as speed. The game's skills for kills mechanic mimics RPG progression where skills can be leveled up by performing a variety of tasks such as collecting agility orbs, killing enemies via weapons, grenades, melee attacks, and completing rooftop races and road races. This series is a true open world game. There are no prerequisites to traveling to other sections of the city. There are no invisible walls or indestructible roadblocks. If you want to go directly to the final boss, you can do it. It's gonna be tough, but... It's doable. This is possibly the most polished open world sandbox game I've played in years. There are only a few bugs and inconsistencies during my entire play session. I only faced one major frame drop on base Xbox One and a hard crash after the final boss. In contrast, the PC version of the game runs like a dream and it's the most optimal way of playing the game. Though that's not to say that bugs and glitches don't exist. The world is surrounded by neon lighting everywhere you look. On certain occasions, the game has a beautiful comic book feel. On the other hand, the simple art style works against the game, with flat textures and interiors that look unfinished. Explosions and particle effects are on full display and they fill up the screen as you wreak havoc against the criminals. I'll admit that the effects may be too much for me to handle. Sometimes I have a hard time keeping track on where I am. In terms of gameplay feel, Crackdown 3 feels like a time capsule from 2007 in the best and worst way possible. Guns are more diverse and feel impactful, my favorites being the Pulse Rifle and the Osiris. That said, for a large set of weapons, you'll really only use two weapons, grenades, and melee attacks in the entire game, switching between better explosive weapons as the game progresses. There is a third slot for weapons, but I feel that its inclusion is pointless when the pulse rifle is good for medium to long range encounters, melee taking care of short range combat by strength level 3, and grenades explosives take out a large amount of enemies when you reach explosives level 3. Platforming feels liberating compared to previous entries with the inclusion of multiple jumps and dashes in later agility levels. Agents will be able to scale towers with ease. This translates to the flow of combat. In my playthrough, I never stayed in one place that moved around like a monkey on crack. Because of this, I never had a reason to drive around the city outside of road races and sun jumps. Having this kind of freedom in movement makes driving pointless. It doesn't help that the driving physics in this game is not that good. Which sucks, because the agency vehicle can transform into three modes. A supercar, a buggy that jumps and scales walls, and a freaking tank! With games that have a large focus on gameplay, their narrative aspect doesn't come into focus. That's usually because having a complex story in a game where combat and explosions are the main draw would slow down the game's pace. What's present in Crackdown 3, however, is serviceable at best. I'm not looking for award-winning writing in a game where the whole point is blowing stuff up, but it gets the job done by providing the bare minimum. Commander Jackson, played by Terry Crews, is a one-dimensional character at best. At worst, he serves as an avatar for the player. He makes so little of an impact to the player, I sometimes forget that he exists, even though he was being heavily advertised leading up to the launch. Even the game forgets Jackson exists because you can barely hear his quips during combat. The agency is here to take from the, the, <laughs> the rest of the cast serves their purpose in the plot and nothing more than that. Crime leaders have more character compared to Crackdown 1, 
but that's like promoting an extra to a supporting role in the film. At the same time, Three's characters don't leave an impression long enough for players to care. While this is echoed in one, at least the gang leaders were given a brief report to give you a reason why you should bring them to justice. Jose Tremendo Guerra uses his failing nightclub on La Mugre Southern Island as a front to ply his vile trade, the manufacture and distribution of a potent and addictive narcotic cocktail. A cunning, cold-blooded operator, Guerra takes deliveries of the drugs by day and deals them to the desperate by night. This operation alone accounts for a significant percentage of the Los Muertos' illicit income. Not only that, the first game ends with a twist that wasn't expected for the time. Congratulations, Agent. Peace at last. You overthrew the world's most evil criminal masterminds and their dominant empires. You have returned law and order to Pacific City. You gave the people back their lives. Thank you. <laughs> it's taken years of meticulous planning and patience to reach this stage, but it was worth it. Who do you think supplied Los Muertos? Who do you think turned a blind eye to the Volk's activities? Who do you think was Shai Jen's biggest supporter? Who do you think ran organized law enforcement and ran it into the ground? The people had to experience absolute anarchy before they would accept unconditional control. You are the portent of a new world order agent. Pacific City was only the beginning. Little to no music appears in prior entries other than the title menu screen and the car radio when driving. This is what I appreciated in Crackdown 3. The fast-paced, sometimes heavy techno music complements the tone and situation of the game. Neiman, lock down the city and get ready for hell. However, the music only appears in combat and certain missions, leaving exploration with awkward silence and light outdoor chatter. After playing Crackdown 3, I replayed the series for this review, just to understand what 3 was missing from past entries. At first, it probably wasn't a good idea to start a retrospective playthrough with controls that are just rough. When I was platforming, the character sometimes doesn't grab on ledges that I want them to grab, and the driving physics feel just as unresponsive, if not worse, than 3's. Did I just misremember my experience? Has my life been nothing but a lie? Before I lost all hope, there was one mode that made me realize why Crackdown 1 was fun to begin with. The comment I made regarding Crackdown 1 being a true open world game was not an exaggeration. Thanks to the mode, Keys to the City, you are able to do whatever your heart desires. Spawn a hit squad, max your stats, gotta go fast, and become God. My favorite thing to do? Spawning as many explosive barrels while running from hit squads. You know you're having fun when even the game is having trouble keeping up. You might notice that I haven't talked about Crackdown 2 during this review. That's because the game is relatively similar in terms of gameplay. There are other elements that make it different such as the introduction of Freakers, which are basically zombies. The area from the previous game is now a post-apocalyptic wasteland. There are other gameplay additions such as the ability to glide and the power slam. But outside of that, there are no other elements that improved from the first game. Multiplayer is no stranger to the series. Prior entries have elements of online multiplayer integrated in some form. The first game had a co-op mode where two players can play with each other. The second had a mix of co-op and competitive play, with several modes to choose from. Crackdown 3's multiplayer offerings as of writing the script is pitiful. Co-op campaign comes back and competitive multiplayer launched with only two modes compared to about five in Crackdown 2. 
If you want to know the current state of the multiplayer mode, then the only thing to see is how long it takes to find a match. I'm just going to leave this here while I talk about the mode. Wrecking Zone is a separate multiplayer mode that was developed by Elbow Rocket to complement Sumo Digital's campaign mode. It comes with two modes of play, Agent Hunter, which is just kill confirmed from Call of Duty, and Territories, where the objective is to hold an area in order to score points. There's also character customization where you can choose who you want to play as? That's it? And here I thought the most tacked on multiplayer mode was the Tomb Raider reboot. I'll admit that I spent the least amount of time playing Wrecking Zone compared to the campaign, but it's for a good reason. Weapon selection is limited, though that may be attributed to balancing. Nearly 100% of all kills are determined by who auto-aimed first, and the destruction that was advertised heavily throughout the 6 years of existence is not used to its advertised potential with the worst user wireframes I have seen in games. Of all the things to nitpick, this is the one that rubs me the wrong way. Let me explain with the limited knowledge that I have with video game development. Wireframes in video games are typically used to determine the geometry of character models and the environment around them during production. NOT IN THE FINAL RELEASE OF A PRODUCT YOU MOTHERFUCK! The footage you are seeing is the only recorded match I have several months after the game released. The player base for the game is nearly non-existent and the netcode is just awful. I don't know if this is on my end or someone else's, but there should be no possible way that lag can result in going through floors and automatic death. I have accumulated a lot of footage that is both humorous and depressing in retrospect. Now, I'm going to try to recreate my thoughts and feelings when playing the multiplayer. Hope you enjoy. Oh my god. Oh Jesus Christ. What I can't, what, I can't double jump now? Uh, 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 how did I die? Uh, that, that's that's not that's not how that works. Oh, great. Now I'm stuck. That that that's fantastic. Peace. Shit. Oh, oh come on. I I what? What? I- I'm so confused! Oh. Oh no. Oh no. I don't think any more needs to be said. Back in 2014, I played Crackdown for the first time, and I enjoyed what I played. That same year, a new entry in the series was announced, making myself and others excited for more. Five years later, after multiple delays from its intended 2016 release, Crackdown 3 is one of the most divisive games this year. The game is fun to play, but everything else that surrounds it drags the experience down. When I saw reviews from major publications, they seemed to rate it harshly, placing it around mediocre at best. After completing the campaign and trying out the multiplayer, it feels complicated to even give it a numbered score. There's as much positive point as there are negative. As a Crackdown fan, I was satisfied, but as a critic, I was left wanting more out of the six year development. So why am I not as furious as other people? Well, several factors come to mind. What softened the blow was due to Xbox Game Pass. Instead of paying $60 on release, I only paid $10 a month to play the game. One week after Crackdown 3 dropped, Anthem officially released to the public, and the game had an onslaught of issues that negatively impacted the experience. With that in mind, I wasn't as angry because I found another game to be frustrated at. This however doesn't excuse Crackdown 3's shortcomings. I had genuine fun with the game, but even I wouldn't recommend it at $60. If you want to give it a try, just pay for a month of Game Pass or wait for a price cut at $30. With that said, there are other games in this genre since Crackdown 1 that attempted to mimic this style. Some became an instant classic, while others are best forgotten. Sunset Overdrive is the best example I can give, with its punk indie rock theme and uses plenty of pop culture references that would even make a hipster cringe. Gameplay is more refined and flows naturally. Weapons are more varied and you can carry about 6 or more weapons at a time. Traversal isn't limited to tower scaling as it introduces grinding on rails and wall running. It's not a perfect game, mind you, but I can confidently recommend that game over Crackdown 3. This isn't a great game, 
but it's not the worst game ever, like other reviewers want to make it out to be. This is more for the hardcore fans of the series, like myself. It's more Crackdown, whether you like it or not. One chapter in my YouTube career has ended. I have finally completed what I wanted to do that I didn't have the chance to create when I was with Misfit Tangents. Now I can move forward with Opez Gaming and create whatever I want. If you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe for more videos in the future. I also created a Patreon that will go to improving the quality of future projects. Even as little as a dollar a month can go a long way. You know, in hindsight, the past few videos I created were just depressing in tone. The topics I've covered so far have a flowing narrative of games with great potential marred by issues and controversies that surround these titles. I think the best course of action is to surround myself with games that give me a reason why I play them. But first, a special event is taking place in less than a month. Perhaps it's time to talk about what the future holds for the next year and the new generation. This has been Opez Gaming. Signing out.